Welcome back to another episode of the Parking Lot Preview. I'm Mike Maynard alongside my co-host Matt Coates. We're here on a beautiful day, unlike a few days ago. Yes. Beautiful day here at the Camp Ball Park, but we're not playing here today. Nope. Heading over to Falmouth, mm-hmm. Doug Fuller Field to take on the Falmouth Commodores. Iannis coming in 8-4-1. and one. Falmouth only 3-10. and 10. Mm-hmm. Matt, we got a good matchup between two West Division foes tonight. What can we expect? Yeah, you mentioned it. You looked at those records. It's a bit jarring. I mean, last year we faced off against the Falmouth Commodores in the Western Division playoffs and had a great series. Took it to three games. But ultimately, we were successful and got to advance to face the Bourne Braves in the West Division finals. So it's a great team that you don't ex- expect to see at the bottom of the standings like they are right now. By the time we get to the pitching matchup, Mike, we're going to notice and the fans are going to realize as well that this is likely to be a highly contested matchup today. I'm excited for it. I'm sure everybody else is in the ballpark uh, there tonight. But yesterday, no baseball being played. On no, Kate, no baseball being no played organized, on Kate. No organized baseball, real uh, games being played yesterday. But um, Fenway Day yesterday yes. for the Cape Cod Baseball League. You were there. Tell me what the Harbor Hawks looked like yesterday. Yeah, Fenway Day, for those who don't know, Every single year, Cape Cod Baseball League has a tryout at Fenway Park for all the players, so all 10 teams. Drove over the bridge, went to Boston, and got to try out in front of, I think, representation from all 30 MLB teams, which is pretty incredible for them. And the opportunity to play in historic Fenway Park is, I'm sure, a bucket list um, activity for almost all of those players there. But yeah, I got to go. I got to watch. They did infield, outfield work, and then obviously batting cage. We saw our guy, Blake Cavill, our new first baseman, go yard in Fenway Park. So that's awesome to see. And then just some solid outings from other players. Kane Kepley looked really good, hitting a lot of line drives. So did Wallace Clark. He was swinging the bat well. So just great to see guys try to prove themselves and prove that they can play baseball at the next level. It's all of them want to. Of course. And even before that, two days ago, as the motorcycle is driving by, hopefully you can still hear us. Yeah. Two days ago, though, Kane got rained out. Yep. We came here in the team ballpark, ready to take on the Kasuda Cataliers. Game gets rained out just a, an hour or so before game time. So we still recorded a preview. Everybody yep. was ready to play. And then Mother Nature again yep. strikes down and doesn't allow any baseball to be played. But so that leaves us where the team is coming off a 12 to 7 win against Brewster mm-hmm. three days ago. I know. Two days ago. Three days Saturday, ago. Saturday. What's the Tuesday, Monday, Sunday? Everyone count that. A few days ago. <laughs> and uh, coming off that win, though, without playing in a few days. Hopefully, are able to you know stay stay loose, stay in the game with that practice yesterday that they get at Fenway. We talked to Coach Rich Character a few days ago after the game, and he was saying that they want to maybe get some work in before today's game because of the lack of a game yesterday. So yeah. we'll see what happens there. If the teams look a little rusty, maybe out the gate, but uh-huh. I'm sure they'll get it going pretty quickly. Falmouth also though at Fenway Day not playing a game, yep. so both teams on an even playing field, not being able to play a game yesterday. But Falmouth, two days ago, let me know what happened with their matchup. Yeah, so two days ago, Falmouth lost in a tightly contested, contested battle against the Beast in the East. That's our neighbors, the YD Red Sox. They lost a 7-5 game there. Um, they've lost two straight games. Obviously, we see the record 3-10. and 10. So far, negative 19 run differential. Just straight up forward, not the best start for Falmouth, but you see them competing with one of the best teams in the league in YD, only losing by two runs there. So this is clearly a team with fight that I don't think we can look at as an easy win, Mike. Right, I 100% agree. We talked about it earlier, you did. Falmouth was in the playoffs last year and was a solid team and has been a solid team over the past few years. So this team's able to flip things around. Only 13 games into the season, there's plenty of time to really get things going again. And tonight might be the night for them. Hopefully not, Hopefully though. Not. We're looking for a Hyannis victory, as you can see with our Hyannis Harbor Hawks polos on. Um, but a big part of that and a big part of this game is going to be tonight's starting pitching matchup, which we introduced this yep. starting pitcher a few days ago. The game got rained out, as we mentioned. But Ryan Dromboski getting the getting the chance on the pump again tonight. The starter out of U Penn, six foot two right handed pitcher, had a good outing his first couple times here on Cape, but sixty three innings pitched, seven and a half ERA at school, seventy one strikeouts to twenty eight walks. Mm-hmm. Honorable all mention or honorable mention for all Ivy League this past season. And we always talk about it. Sophomore year, yep. all Ivy League pitcher of the year, yep. and first team all Ivy. So. Guy's a, a guy that's got a lot of uh, prowess and a lot of records that he's able to hold and a lot of hardware, I'm sure, that he's uh, happy to call his. So a guy that's got a lot of success that he's had so far and success on Cape as well. Tell me about what he's done on Cape Cod so far this year. Yeah, Mike, you mentioned it. He's been pretty phenomenal on Cape. If we look at his numbers, you'd be like, well, wow, he's been amazing. 
1.23 ERA over seven and a third innings pitched with seven strikeouts and four walks. You look at that, and you're like, wow, one of the best pitchers on our team for sure. The one thing we want to watch out for tonight is to limit the base runners. So far in his first few appearances, he's allowed several walks and several hits each. So he's had crowded bases, help from his infield and his outfield, and then obviously his pitch, his battery teammate, him and his catcher calling a good game to get out of those jams. That's something I'm sure if we ask Ryan, he's going to say, yeah, that's not the intention. I'm not trying to get guys on base. I'm not trying to work myself out of a jam. Luckily, he's been able to do so. But tonight against the Commodores, look for him to try to get to strike one. That's what Mitch Carragher always tells us is his first priority for his pitching staff. Get the first strike, get ahead of the count, put the ball in your court, make the batter nervous, and then hopefully stay ahead in those counts, prevent runners on base. And if he does that, I'm sure those numbers are going to stay as pretty as they are right now. And you mentioned it, even with the base runners that he's been allowing, he's still had success, able to work out of those jams, as you mentioned. He's got that clutch factor where even if there's runners on second and third, he's able to get out of it a lot of times. So he showed a lot of prowess and a lot of success so far to start his Cape Cod baseball league career. And hopefully he continues that tonight. But he's going to have a big matchup mm-hmm. against a familiar foe yes. tonight. Not for him, but no, for, for us. a couple of players on the team. Maybe yeah. two. Um, At this rate, yeah, two. And maybe a few coaching staff members. Great board. Great board. Yeah. Shout out. So a few guys, but all of us interns, we know him pretty well. That's Hayden Frank. That name might ring a bell to you as well. The Harbor Hawks fans from last year know he was a pitcher with the Harbor Hawks last summer. Had a lot of success yes, as well. He was one pitcher. of the better pitchers for the squad last year. Six foot five left-handed pitcher out of Lipscomb. Was injured over the uh, yes. spring this year. Only 18 innings pitched. Just under a five ERA, 20 strikeouts, only two walks. Mm-hmm. So he had success in his limited time. But he's had a lot of success on Cape. What's he been doing so far for Stomach this year? Yeah, look at his numbers here, Mike. We have seven innings pitched, 1.29 ERA. 12 Ks and only one walk. While he had limited experience at college, you see that K to walk ratio translating to his Cape appearances. 12 Ks, only one walk over seven innings. I mean, that's phenomenal. But this should come as no surprise to those of you watching who were fans last year and those of us who watched Hayden Frank last year. Quite frankly, the only reason he's not wearing the blue and orange of the Harbor Hawks is because of his injuries at school this past season. He's a guy that we would like to have back. But I think due to some injury concerns, we decided to stay away. And, hey, I'm happy for Frank. He found a spot in Falmouth, and he's pitching so phenomenally. Hopefully he keeps propelling his future career forward. But we look at these numbers, and this is what I was talking about earlier. You look at the record for Falmouth, 3-10, and 10, and you might think, hey, we're in the top of the standings, they're at the bottom, we should win this game. At the end of the day, each game is different. When you have a pitching matchup like this, Trubosky, 1.23 KBRA, and Frank, 1.29 KBRA, this could be a low-scoring game, could be a shootout, but the point is it's going to be highly competitive, and it's not a rollover game for the Commodores. They're going to compete, and with Frank out there, I'm sure he's going to go out and put on a show. His arm got some rest, too, over these past couple days not being able to play, so they'll be fresh. They'll be ready Mm -hmm. to go. It should be an interesting one, as you mentioned. Could be low scoring, but when these guys get out of the out of the game, there's some bullpen arms for either side. That, you know, we haven't seen uh, what those numbers are going to look like, so mm-hmm. it'll be an interesting one overall. We got to move on to pick our player of the game, though. I guess I'll start. I'm going to pick one of those familiar faces to mm-hmm. Hayden Frank. I'm going to pick Eric Snow. Eric Snow with the team last summer, with the team this summer, leading the team, leading high in the Harbor Hawks in batting average right now, having a lot of success at the plate, and he knows a lot about this guy Hayden Frank. Mm-hmm. Maybe the two of them. Talk before the game, maybe, you know, who knows? Get in his head, I don't know. But I think Eric Snow's in for a big game. He's been having a bunch of big games recently. It's not a crazy pick. It's not outlandish to call that. <laughs> but I think Eric Snow is going to continue his success tonight in Falmouth at Del Ford Field. That's a great pick there, Mike. I think you said Snow leading the team in batting average has been phenomenal for the Hawks so far this season. Talked to him earlier in the year about how he's able to stay ready with such a crowded middle of the field, we know how much talent we have out there in the infield. I kind of laughed at my question. It's like, you always got to be ready. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, this guy's a baller. And so I'm sure he's going to go out and ball tonight. My pick, I'm going to move back. You start in the infield. We're going to take a couple steps back. We're going to the outfield. That's going to be Nick Groves, former Niagara player, recently announced his commitment to play for Illinois in the Big Ten. First of all, congrats to Nick and his family and all the fighting Illini faithful out there watching this. Nick. Great presence on defense. He's a guy that I really love this. He does it on Cape, but in his batting practice at Fenway Park in front of all the scouts, started each round with a bunt, showing that he's the type of player who's going to take walks. He's going to look at good pitches. 
only swing when he needs to, and he's going to get on base in creative ways. Guy who can punt down, guy who can swing, guy who can draw walks. Hopefully he uses that creative and unique plate approach, get himself on base a few times, maybe score some runs, and then continue playing stellar defense. That stellar defense has been huge in that outfield, which has suffered some injuries as well. So that'll be a huge factor in tonight's game. But I love the pick. I love both of our picks. I think we're in for a good game of offense, a good game of defense, and a good game of just baseball overall. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Looks like not a single cloud in the sky. So if I had to guess, I think we'd get this game in. If, uh, if I have yet to see a cloud, and I would love to play some baseball. We don't have a Grant McNew weather report today. Shout out to Grant from last year's intern team. But I think it's safe to say we don't really need one. Beautiful day. Mm-hmm. Go on down to Gulfport Field. Check out the broadcast. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Go, Go Hawks. Hawks.